Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful cathedral window pillow. Now it looks complicated, but you're going to be amazed at how easy this is to make this. Um, we have used the Welcome Home collection from Shabby Fabrics in our sample pillow in the teal and green colorway. I love that colorway. Obviously, we designed it here at Shabby Fabrics, but today I'll be using the cream with the pink um, colorway, and I can't wait again to show you how simple this is. It looks complicated, and your guests will be so impressed, especially you know, beautiful pillows, and you can make this any size. So whatever, when I'm teaching it today, you'll be able to actually grow this to a bed size quilt if you wanted to. So it's the same technique, just repeated over and over. Um, go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage. Um, we'll give you some specifics there on as far as sizes and supplies that we've used. But basically what you wanna get is just a piece of um, maybe cover stock. Um, it just cut a nine inch square out of something that's kind of sturdy. Uh, just a regular piece of paper is a little bit too flimsy. And you'll start off with whatever you want your windows. So I think of those as kind of like arcs, kind of like a flower. Whatever you want that to be, you'll want to have those in 10 inch squares. So I have those ahead of time. Now we learned something when we were making the sample pillow. This is kind of an origami thing. It seemed to work best if we added sizing to our fabric because when we start ironing everything and you need those creases to stay in place, which you'll see shortly, it just seemed to help by having sizing in there. So we like the best press. Um, anything that you prefer using, go for that, great. Um, the reason we liked the, and we've already pre-starched those, or pre-put sizing in, so I'll put that away for now. Just wanted to mention that does help hold its folds a lot better if it has sizing in it. The re you're using the nine inch square because you're going to be setting that on the back side of your square here. Um, you can either just use double-sided tape. I've got a sew line glue pen. I love these sew line glue pens. If you don't have one of these, just get one. I use it for English paper piecing. Anytime I want a template to stay in position and not move, I'll just put a little stripe of glue on the back like that and center that. Now, at this point, you want your iron to be on the hottest setting possible because you're gonna bring that edge up and you're just gonna go over top of your template. Now you could use freezer paper. Freezer paper is eight and a half by 11, the, the size that we carry, and this is a nine inch square. So it's not um, necessarily ideal because you'd take two sizes of freezer paper, but you could attach those two sizes and make that work as well. Um, again, we just kind of grabbed a piece of a cover stock. Um, you could, you, I suppose you could even use cardboard. Okay, you get the idea right now, though, that we are going to go ahead and iron our fabric over top of our template. Now, you could add additional sizing at this point if you wanted to. Watch how I use the sew line glue pen in the corners. Okay, and as I bring this side up, it's just gonna help keep stabilize that because we want this thing to be good and pressed, all right? You get the idea, you're gonna do this all the way around. Now I've done that ahead of time, so let me bring that out. You don't need to spend <laughs> time watching me iron, right? Um, <clears throat> this is what this is ultimately gonna look like, but let me show you how I got to this place. So you saw me ironing, right? Everything around there, and then you simply remove that, and you can use it again and again and again. So you don't have to keep making that nine inch square template. Once you're at this place, um, assume this is completely flat, you would just go ahead and fold in half and fold in half again and press right here. And that's to find my center. Everything is going to be based around the center. So make sure you very accurately, precisely find that center point. Because once you have that, then you'll bring your four corners in like such Take this to your pressing mat again. Sometimes I get asked about this pressing mat. This is nothing more than a piece of wood covered with uh, batting and then covered with some pretty fabric. So 
it's just it's just kind of nice to have it on not only on camera because I don't have room for a big ironing board, but just in my workspace. So this might be something too that you might enjoy um, just making one for yourself and works great. Okay, then, remember how I said it's kind of an origami. Then you're gonna bring in your four sides as such and press again, okay? For the pillow that's behind me, we made nine of these. As you can imagine, just keep adding them and you're just gonna grow your project to a larger pillow, maybe a throw or even a bed quilt. So you can just keep going, make it as the size that you want. Now, I have two of these. Here's ultimately what this grid's gonna look like. Let me just show you the whole story. This might make a lot more sense to you. See, I have my nine grids. Basically, I made nine sandwiches, right? Nine of these little, little guys. How do you attach one side by side? Very simple. These are side by side now. And you just simply bring up, let's see here, I want to have that seam running the same way, yes. Simply bring up those flaps and you're going to sew right along that press line. So you would just go ahead and pin, okay? Of course, pin and very carefully sew right where that crease line is, and then you will have them side by side sewn together. So they're gonna look like this. And you will continue doing that so you have three across. Then, let's imagine there's another one right here. In fact, there is, let's do that real quick. Let's take those out of the way. So we have our three across, three across, line them up again, bring the flaps up and Okay, let me point this one out. It's very important that those intersections come out properly. Do not attempt to avoid pinning. If you hate pinning, well, get over it today <laughs> because it's really important that those intersections come out looking, they're, they're quite precise. You can imagine if they're off slightly, um, it won't be as attractive. Now, we've covered that intersection with a button because I like buttons, but you might have small children and not want to have the danger of having buttons maybe on your couch because they can pull them off and choke on them. All the more important that that intersection is right on the money. So line things up very carefully and pin, making sure that you're mindful of those intersections and that everything is lining up just as precisely as possible. So this is how this would look and it would be all pinned together and again, you're just taking this. Don't worry about the quarter inch seam. You're not sewing a quarter inch seam. You are sewing in this little valley here, this where, where you see the crease right here. You're just sewing right along here, right across that point. Make sure you catch that. You might want to pin it again all the way across. And you'll continue until you have your grid. Okay, so you understand how we get to that place. Now is where you get to decide what you want to have showing here. We used a mini charm pack, again, from the Welcome Home Collection. Keep in mind that with a mini charm pack, you usually get just one of a fabric, or maybe two, if there's some duplicates, and there is in this case. Some of these fabrics are duplicated because there's 33, let's see, there's 33 different prints in the Welcome Home Collection, and there's a total of, I believe, 40 or 42 squares, so a few are duplicated. Another idea is let's say that you really like a certain fabric. If you get the charm pack, you could cut this exactly in half both ways and have four of each fabric or the layer cake, which is 10 inch squares. You would lay those out, cut two and a half inch rows this way and this way, and you would get 16 of each fabric. So you don't have to have the kind of scrappy look you could have a more organized look and be using the same fabrics repeatedly. So just wanted to mention that as options. Um, I like pink, of course. We did teal and green, so today I'm gonna choose some pink. Um, and I just grabbed some of my mini charms squares. And at this point, um, one thing that you're going to need to do is notice how these flaps are open. I want you to come in here and see what we've done here. We've done a nice tight zigzag stitch about 
a half inch long, maybe three quarters of an inch long, both vertically and horizontally, and that closes those flaps down, okay? So we can take this to the sewing machine right now, and we can go ahead and, you know what, you don't need to see me sew. You've seen me sew, it's a zigzag stitch. Let's focus on this project so that we can, I want you to, I want to show you more options with this versus you watching me sew. You can see what I've done here. You can see it even on the back side. Three quarters of an inch long, tight little zigzag. The setting on my machine is one and a half on width and a half inch in length. So you know your own machine, practice on some scrap fabric, but you'll go ahead and you're gonna seal these clothes. Now, where these come in is not over top of this, but it's in this section. It's where the seam is. I recommend that you, rather than pin them, we at first pin them, and all we did was poke ourselves throughout the whole project. <laughs> Go ahead and either use the Roxanne's glue base, which I love and use for so many things, or the sew line glue pen. Maybe we'll do one of each and just see how that works out. That will keep this in position when we're actually making the window. You'll see what I mean shortly. We will sew that window together. That's where I want you to be seeing um, how that comes together. Now, I am just visually putting this in here. So I have, notice how I'm right along, my point here and the point here is right along my seam. And that point is right at that those junctions right there. And I just press that in there. Now it's not going anywhere. Roxanne's glue based it. This is water soluble. If you ever wash the pillow, um, this will come out. You don't need to wash the pillow. This will not gray over time. I've used Roxanne's glue based it for decades. Never an issue, wonderful product. Um, so line glue pen, another option. You might like this one better. Just put a little bit of this in here. Okay, and we're just going to lay that in there. Now, as always, I like to lay out my fabrics and figure out what I'm doing. Um, let's see here, we've got one going there. So you would just lay them out. Every time you see a seam, you're gonna do something there, okay? So you get the idea, I'm like, I don't want two cream, so I'm gonna maybe put a stripe here like this. And you're just gonna put those into position. Now what you'll do down here is you just take your mini charm and you just cut it in half on the diagonal. Um, I don't really have a rotary cutter here, but you get the idea that you only need half of that in this quadrant right here. So you just put half of that and you'll fill in around your perimeter. So you get the idea of how you fill this in. How to make the cathedral window. Let's go focus on that real quick. What we'll do is you're simply gonna roll this back like this. You know, let me work more in the middle of this. It's gonna be easier for you to see that. Let me just put one, nah, maybe right in here. It's gonna be easier for you to see me do this. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna roll this back as such take this to the sewing machine, and we're gonna sew maybe about an eighth of an inch away from that edge. I've seen people use zipper foots for this, their regular presser foots for this. Try it and decide what you like. Work, do whatever works best for you. Um, I don't think there's one solution. So you, you know your presser feet and what you prefer, but let's sew this together. You do wanna, of course, use a coordinating thread. This is the Masterpiece Color 152. Um, and this is the Maywood Studio Shadow Play. I believe this is E4. So these colors, these work beautifully together. So we're just gonna roll this back. I'm not going to pin it. You, you know what, let's, let's decide if we want to pin that in place, we could. I've done it both ways where I pinned it and haven't pinned it. It doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference. I pin when I have to and I don't when I don't need to. If it's not gonna get me anywhere, it's like why take the extra time to do it? Now let's go ahead and start right in that, right in that seam. And I'm just sewing 
ever so closely. I'm gonna get that needle down here because I'm, I'm gonna move my pin. So cool looking. It's a really, really neat effect. So I want to show this to you. So you see that I just try to be consistent. I don't even know what that measurement is. That might even be a 16th of an inch. I'm not sure what that is. Now I do recommend that rather than come and do this side, do the opposite side. Couple options. You've got all your fabrics laid out again, right? Let's kind of pretend like they're back out in, in this position. We could, so we don't have to start and stop. We could, of course, this would be glued down, right? We could, once we come in here, just cross over, come in here. Uh, the one that would be, okay, this would be glued down you would just kind of keep crisscrossing all the way. That way you're not starting and stopping. Just an idea, just a possibility. But what I highly recommend is that if you're going to just come here and stop, you come and do the opposite side first. You don't just kind of work your way around each of the windows. I think it just helps it keep it better balanced if you now came and did this side and then came back and did the two opposite sides. So you get the idea of how this comes together. So that's how, in fact, let me finish this. I want you to see what one window is gonna look like, and then I'm gonna show you how to finish the pillow. So I sewed the windows of one of the squares and filled in with my other mini charms, including in my little corners. Just wanted to remind you, you'll take your mini charm, two and a half inch square, and just cut corner to corner and that's what you're fitting in those little slots around the corner so that's what your sight picture is going to be now I want to show you I've done one I want to do an opposite one so you see what that whole window that kind of opening looks like um, just gonna put a little pin in there take it to the sewing machine I just want you it's the same thing we've been doing um, just bending it over and sewing but I just wanted to show you what that full opening will look like, and then I'll show you how to finish up your pillow. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you know what, I hope you will, because we're always coming out with fun projects. So just subscribe before you get too far away from the computer today. sophisticated I absolutely love it so there's the opening right there's the flower and then you do the opposite side and then the opposite sides and again we could potentially have come here laid this back kept going laid this one back and you're kind of just kind of doing this wave all the way across and come back across it doesn't matter how you do it just make sure that you are doing opposite sides once they're all sewn all opened up like that these uh, finish at four and a half inches square. So three across means 13 and a half inches is what this is right here. That's the size of this pillow. Simply get your backing fabric. We picked the beautiful floral. Cut that to 13 and a half with right sides together. You'll pin, sew all the way around, leave about a five, six inch opening turn it through and whip stitch it closed. So that's all there is to learning how to make the cathedral window pillow from shabby fabrics.